All right, so Corinna Kopp just got a ton of backlash for her mental health merch. And my opinions on it might surprise you a little bit. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And real quick, exciting announcement, the Unsolicited Advice podcast with myself and Matt is now available on Spotify. So if you haven't yet, go check it out go follow it it helps promote this mental health podcast that we just started and we record it every tuesday it should be up on wednesdays but i will let you know when it gets up on the other platforms all right so yeah let's jump into this um i put up a poll yesterday on the community tab i've been doing a bunch of polls and i appreciate all of you getting involved but anyways i put up a poll saying like do you want me to chime in on the corinna cop situation and overwhelmingly the answer was yes so here we are. <laughs> so I was unaware of this. Um, I watched Ready to Glare's video on it. I watched I'm Alex's video on it. And yeah, something that, you know, I, I've brought up to all of you is like creating this kind of echo chamber of everybody, you know, talking about the same subject and all of that. But I wanted to do this video as well because I have some different views on it. For those of you who don't know what's going on, Corinna Kopp is getting a bunch of backlash because she made this merch um, and it says my anxieties have anxiety or something like that on the front. Then on the back, it has the dictionary definition of anxiety. And it's getting a lot of backlash for a variety of different reasons, okay? So I'll start out by saying this, like I 1000% agree that it is lazy merch, okay? So some of you who have watched the nerd, the new Nerd City video where he's kind of ripping into Jake Paul and you know, and stuff like that, like this merch is very, very lazy. Um, Ready to Glare said it too, and yeah, I was looking at it, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's pretty lazy merch. Like uh, Tristan designs all of our merch by hand, like for example, this shirt right here of Wyatt. Um, so yeah, that's one of my issues with it. Would I buy it? No, but it is lazy merch, okay? And that's something that I think a lot of YouTubers do. Like, it's interesting because I see some of the YouTubers who are like, you know, upset about it. Like I've seen their merch. Like when I'm researching, you know, what merch other YouTubers have and stuff, I look at it, I'm like, really like a lot of youtubers out there are selling merch with just like a word on it you know and i'm all for like minimalist designs and things like that but it's like a balance between like minimalism and then like you know the the quality of the clothes the price all that kind of stuff comes into play and that's just me personally all right so anyways if you're somebody who bought corinna Kopp's merch you do you baby girl that's your thing all right it's just something that i'm not a fan of all right now one of the other complaints was that corinna cop was only only donating 15 percent of the profits to the adaa which is an anxiety organization right like you guys come on okay like a lot of this video is going to be about outrage culture and how ridiculous it is like 15 percent is a pretty decent amount, all right? Most places are gonna do five, 10%. I think 15% is very generous, okay? Especially when you consider the fact that A, she didn't have to donate anything, and B, a lot of people don't donate anything, right? Like at all, like 0%, all right? So the main concern everybody has, not even concern, I don't know why it would be concerning, concerning is making profit off of mental health. Now, something that I will say, like noticing what's happening in comments and on Twitter, something that Tristan just introduced me to is gatekeeping, right? Like gatekeeping is like, oh, you don't understand this. I understand this. And I'm gonna make some videos about that in the mental health sphere. I just learned this term and it's absolutely ridiculous. But anyways, like people are saying you shouldn't profit off of mental health merch. And like, that's something that like really intrigues me because I have a mental health channel. I'm doing this full time. You know, I get this same kind of thing, but like you guys, you need to understand, like I worked in the mental health field, okay? I worked at a treatment center and I got a paycheck. Like, am I supposed to feel bad about that? Are therapists 
psychiatrists, psychologists, you know, um, behavioral technicians, uh, nurses, like all these people who work in the mental health field, are they supposed to feel bad for quote unquote profiting off of mental health? Like, should doctors feel bad for profiting off of physical health? Like, this is something that just absolutely fascinates me. Also, I read a ton of books, a ton of books, and 99.9% .9 of the time, actually 100% of the time, I read mental health books. Like, that's what I read, right? So should those authors not get paid for their work because they're talking about mental health? Like, my question to all of you is like, where do we draw the line? Like, where do we draw the line with like people profiting off mental health, right? Like taking advantage of the mentally ill is an issue. Like I've mentioned this in previous things, like something that I'm, you know, uh, always looking into is like addiction. Like um, there are some very shady treatment centers, especially out in Florida that take advantage of people in this vulnerable state. But like, as far as like, quote unquote profiting, like everybody needs to like really, really chill out on it. Especially because I'm not gonna lie, I've thought, I've thought about making mental health merch. And th the thing is, the thing is, is like everything's about perception and how you see things. Like I see what Corinna Kopf is doing, even though I think her merch is kind of lazy and maybe overpriced, but I don't know the quality and all that. But like the way I see it is empowering, right? Like like taking back this thing, you know? Like I like one of the critiques that I keep seeing online is like, "Oh, this is a terrible thing. You shouldn't you shouldn't put that on merch." And it's like, "Well, not everybody." Like I remember um a while back. This this comment hasn't happened for a while, but it was a long, long, long time ago. But somebody's like, "You're laughing? You're laughing about your mental illness? This is absolutely miserable." And it's like, no, like something that I do, like it empowers me to laugh about, you know, my anxiety, to laugh about my depression, to laugh about the crazy things I did in an addiction. Um, my co-host Matt and I, um, we, we talk about this all the time. Like this is something that we do. So like that's a form of gatekeeping. Like who are you to say that people can't, you know, empower themselves through this type of thing. Like if I made merch for it, just so you all know, if I ever make like mental health merch that talks about anxiety or depression or whatever, like just so you know, it comes from an empowering place. Now, all of us are in different places on our journey. Like I remember when I first got sober, I was like, what the heck is so funny? Why are you guys laughing, right? But then I began to understand like people are laughing about this thing because it no longer has control over them. Now, I think Ready to Glare brought up a very interesting point when she was talking about, you know, other forms of mental illness, like what would we think if it said something about like, my bulimia has bulimia or something like that. And that's interesting. Like I love like getting my wheels turning and saying, okay, you know, but things like depression and anxiety are the most common forms of mental illness that people struggle with. So I think, you know, it is different. Like, I don't know if I would like do something about trauma, you know, cause it's a little bit more serious. Um, and don't get me wrong, anxiety can be very, very serious and debilitating, but I just want you guys to think about that. Like, let me know down in the comments below, like, are you at a place in your recovery journey where you can joke and laugh about your mental health issues? You know what I mean? Like, let me know down in the comments. But the other thing is, this is something that I actually talked about on the guest video I did over on Psych IRL. Like, I talked about, like, I'm trying to change the way we look at mental health, right? Like, I, I see a lot of the, you know, um, controversy that I get, um, you know, thrown at me is like people aren't at that place yet where, you know, they're, they're ready to normalize mental health. But like I said in my video with Donna is like, I imagine a day where people look at mental health the same as physical health, right? Like for example, like nobody would even question merch that says something about like getting into shape or like, you know, going, you know, like uh, going on the treadmill cause you're overweight. Like nobody would even have a second thought about that. But when it comes to mental health, it is. And one of my missions here at The Rewired Soul is to normalize this conversation. So I absolutely 1000% disagree with the backlash in that sense. Now, here's my main problem. Here's my main problem with Corinna Kopf, okay? So when I was doing some research for this video, Corinna Kopf actually launched this merch 
like nine months ago. That video right there, that's her opening up about her anxiety when she first launched the merch. So real quick, like I don't understand why this is such a big deal right now because she launched this merch forever ago, but she just made new Instagram posts about it. So maybe people like missed it in the last time or maybe outrage culture has gotten worse in the last nine months, I don't know. But here's my issue with it. Watching that video, it's one of the reasons why I started this channel. Watching Corinna Kopp's video, or you'll see it with a lot of videos where people are talking about mental health issues, is that it's all problems, no solutions, right? Like, don't get me wrong. That's why I say we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. Like, I believe that, you know, Corinna Kopp helped a lot of people with that video, like letting other people know it's okay to talk about your anxiety, it's okay to have anxiety, I deal with it too, I'm sure a lot of people connect, but at no place in that video did she like provide resources or anything like that. She did mention that, you know, she has a bunch of different coping skills, but like, what are they? Like, is it something I can learn? Is it something that other people can learn? You know what I mean? So that's one of the reasons I always say we talk about the problem but focus on the solution because there are too many people out there who are just talking about their mental health issues and then like, I'm sitting there waiting. Like, you know, I know a lot of people are sitting there waiting saying, what do I do about it, right? So I think Corinna Koff should, you know, lean into this thing and make some videos about what her coping skills are. Is she on medication? Did she talk to a doctor or a psychiatrist? Is she going to therapy? You know, does she meditate? Like, what is she doing? What can she do to help people with their anxiety you know what i mean so like me personally like i you all know like i meditate i write i do all sorts of things these videos you know all sorts of stuff okay something that i just started was therapy with better help i'm gonna do a review of it pretty soon like after i've done like a whole month i actually have my first um, appointment with my therapist today to actually do a one-on-one -on -one talk because we've just been messaging and it's at no fault of hers like she's been asking me to do it but like going to California and all that and like I got trust issues so I was feeling her out so I want to do this um, that call first and then you know let you all know but if you're interested in checking out better help online therapy the link is always down in the description below but also like if you don't use better help just go find a therapist somewhere like it can be very helpful like I am learning so much more and it's awesome. I'll let you all know in that follow-up video. But anyways, let me know down in the comments below, like do you get empowered laughing or joking or normalizing the mental health conversation like? Because for me it does, but I wanna hear from all of you. I wanna know where you guys are at in your journey, all right? But anyways, don't forget, the podcast unsolicited advice is now up on Spotify. Go check it out, give it a follow, give it a listen, okay? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing, and don't forget, I have the February Patreon Q&A up, so make sure that you ask your questions there. And if you wanna become a patron, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you next time.